Hi, it's Margaret and thank you so much for joining me here on this gorgeous day on The Gardening Me. Um, today, it's all about seed sowing. I am sowing four, whoops, four different kinds of seed or different packets of seed, I guess. It's three different kinds of seed, two different varieties on this one, I believe. Yep. <laughs> and uh, these are all seeds that I've never uh, grown before. So these two here are lobelia. I'll get into the specifics when I actually uh, go to sow the seed. Then I have this guy here, which is fluffy feather top grass. And that's one of the ones I saw at the William Dam uh, display gardens last year. Another one that I saw there as well is this Griffin Rex begonia. And super excited to get going on that one. Now, the thing when you're growing plants from seed that you've never tried before, well, there's two things actually. First thing is you may have success, you may not. So out of the gate, it's kind of good to know that you're not necessarily gonna be successful every single time because there's always some good lessons to learn, I think, whenever you're doing something for the first time. So kind of be prepared for that. And I guess don't be too disappointed if it doesn't work out the first time because that does happen. And the second thing is, is kind of related I guess and that's make sure you take some good notes when you sowed how you sowed that kind of thing so if things do go well then you know hey that worked out really well and you can replicate it if things don't go well then you can kind of switch things up and do things a little bit differently next time so I was going to switch up all my stuff and bring it out here but that's a lot of work so I thought, you know what, I have everything already set up downstairs, so let's go inside and get sewing. Okay, so I am going to start with the Lobelia here, and these are the two varieties that I'm going to be trying. This one here is called Regatta Mix, and it's a trailer, so it gets pretty long stems, you put it at the edge of a pot and it kind of just trails over the edge. This one here is more of an upright variety and it only gets to be about six inches long. It is uh, called Riviera Marine Blue. Now both of these varieties go from full sun all the way to full shade, which is perfect because I'm planning to put them in pots in my front entrance area, which is primarily shade. One of the other great things about these varieties is that they both have improved heat tolerance and we can get pretty hot here in the summer. So these are the containers that I've decided to sew these in. I'm not sure how big these are around, but I'm thinking about two by two or so. I'm planning on doing four pots, so one plant in each pot. These are relatively small pots um, for the upright variety, and then for the trailing variety, I'm going to do two cell packs because I have two kind of larger pots where these are going to kind of act as spillers, I guess, around the edge. But in both cases, the pots only need spillers on half of it. It because they're kind of up against um, a wall or a corner. So I'm thinking that four should be enough. So the other thing with these cell packs is I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have to transplant them out of here because when I purchase these in the store, which is what I've normally done over the years, they have come in cell packs this size or even smaller. Let me grab this, like something like this. They're pretty small when I first purchase them. And then once I plant them in the pots, they do just fine. So I'm pretty sure I won't need to transplant these at all until they go right into the pot in the spring. Now, when it comes to how far ahead to sow, I'm sowing these here at the beginning of March, which is about nine weeks before my last frost date, which is in early May. And on the packet, it recommends that you sow between eight and 10 weeks before your last frost date. For the most part, what I generally tend to do is kind of split it. So if it says eight to 10 weeks, the very first time I sow it, I'll sow it kind of in the middle, so nine weeks. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a couple of tags. So I finished the tag here, and what I also do on the tags is I do any additional details on the back. So in this case, I put down that this guy is six inches tall. If this was a plant that I was gonna be putting in a border or a raised bed, I would also indicate there how far apart I put them in. But in this case, it's going in a pot, so I don't have to do that. And 
For this one, I just indicated that it was a trailer. So I know this is the trailing variety that I put around the edge of the pot. I'm gonna open these packets before I get my hands dirty. And we're just gonna take a quick look to see what these look like. Now, normally lobelia seed are really, really tiny, but in this case, they're pelleted. So what that means is they put this coating on it. Usually it's kind of, I don't know what they're made of, like sort of a cornstarchy mixture or something. I'm not sure. What it does is it makes really super tiny seed easier to sow. And they even put it in one of these little foamy kind of envelopes here so that the uh, seeds don't get crushed, like that coating doesn't get crushed. So both of these will be exactly the same. And we'll just take a quick peek here. This is basically what you're looking at when it comes to pelleted seed. If they weren't pelleted, they would be significantly smaller than that. You'll notice that I'm cutting these along the bottom and the reason I do that is so that when I go to put the seeds away, I will fold up and kind of paper clip the bottom and that way I still can see what variety this is. So I do that for pretty much all of my uh, seeds here. So I'm just taking these out. I'm gonna put them back in here so I don't get them mixed up. And now the soil. Okay, so for the soil, I have ProMix HP, which is a seed starting mix. I've already moistened it and it's, you know, nice and moist, but not sopping wet. I'm not wringing any water out. And I always feel like a broken record when I talk about the soil mix because it's the same every time. But I figure if somebody is a new gardener and they've never really seen a seed starting video before, they might not know that. So I always try to put it in. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I am going to just fill these cell packs with soil. I'm going to fill them up almost to the top. So when I fill these up, I do firm the soil down a bit on the top. I'm not compacting it. I'm not pressing down super hard, but I'm pressing down enough that it is a smooth surface. That way, when we sow the seeds, they will stay on the surface. If you just kind of shove the soil on there and don't really firm it down nicely, some of those little seeds may end up in the crevices in the soil, and then they won't get the light they need to germinate. Once I spray them down with water, uh, that soil will settle on top of them, and uh, they may not end up germinating because of that. Okay, so the first one I'm going to sow is the marine blue. And for that one, I'm only doing a four cell pack here. Now, lobelia is sown in clumps. So it's not one seed per cell and you don't thin them after the fact. So when you go to transplant them, you do not split them up or anything. You transplant the entire clump. From what I've seen, you put anywhere from four to six seeds in each cell. So I am going to split it down the middle and I'm going to do five seeds in each cell. Now I am kind of sowing them towards the middle here, but I'm leaving a little bit of space in between each seed, about, I don't know, maybe half an inch or so. So I'm going to put my label on here before I do the next one. And then I will do the topping and everything right at the end. Um, so I do them all together. So the next is going to be the regatta mix and I'm doing two of these. I'm not sure actually if I'm going to have seeds for all eight because it says that this has 30 to 35 pelleted seeds. So I may not have enough. What I might do in this case is I'll do four seeds per cell, and then if I have any left over, I'll just add. Hopefully I have at least four seeds per cell. Okay, so it looks like I only have a couple of seeds left after doing that, so I am just going to go like this, and I do also have this. <laughs> And they actually say, if the seeds are crushed, just kind of sprinkle the whole pack. So I'm just gonna go like this, cause you never know, those seeds are so tiny, there may have been a teeny tiny seed in there. 
and that is it for that. Now, as I said, there are two here of the regatta mix, so I kind of like to minimize my use of the uh, plastic tags, and so what I often will do, if there's multiple containers of the same variety, how I distinguish them without using another plastic tag is I will take a little paper clip that's of a particular color. I have kind of a multicolor pack of paper clips and I will put that on here and then I will take just a wooden popsicle stick and put the other one of the same color on here and then go like this and then I know that these are the same. They do need light to germinate but the packet, although it does say it needs light to germinate, it also says that you should bury them about one eighth of an inch deep. When I'm surface sewing, I do not bury them that deep. I literally just cover them with a sprinkling of vermiculite and that's that. What I think I'm going to do in this case, because it does say to go that one eighth of an inch deep, is I'm still going to do my typical surface sewing with the vermiculite, but I might add a little bit more vermiculite than I normally would. And hopefully that should be okay. Now, before I add the vermiculite, what I'm going to do is spray the seeds first. This will ensure they have really good seed to soil contact, and it will also jumpstart the process of getting that coating dissolved. And now I am going to put on that layer of vermiculite. As I said, a tiny bit more than what I probably would normally do. I would say the depth is still less than one eighth of an inch, maybe one sixteenth of an inch. Now that I've done that, I'm going to spray again to make sure that the vermiculite is nicely dampened. So next is bottom watering because I want to make sure that the soil is adequately moist. Bottom watering is the best way to do that without possibly dislodging any of the seeds. So I'm just putting it in a um, tray like that and what I'll do is add water to the bottom of it and they'll sit here for approximately 10 minutes or so. And what you're looking for is maybe about this much water on the bottom, like half an inch or so. It doesn't need to be full or anything like that. Just enough that it soaks up in the bottom. Okay, and that's it for this. So I'm just going to set this aside and let it sit there for 10 minutes. And now I am going to carry on with the next one. Next is this guy, and it's a gorgeous Rex Begonia, and it's Griffin Rex Begonia. And it has this gorgeous green and silver foliage that gets pretty big, like, you know, about that big or so. I don't know how much that is, 10 inches or so, you know, 8 to 10 inches. And um, it also grows pretty large. This guy usually gets about 16 inches tall. And it's great both in the ground and in pots. So I'm actually going to be trying both. This one is also full sun to full shade and it really loves hot, humid weather, which is awesome because our summers are always hot and they're always humid. I'm also planning on putting this in our front entrance. So what I'm thinking of doing is I have two kind of larger pots. So I'm going to be putting one in each of those larger pots in the front entrance. And then I am going to sew, I think a total of five. So three of them, I'm going to be trying them in the border instead and seeing how they do there. For these, I am actually going to be sowing one seed in each of these two by three inch cells here. These are not cheap seeds. They're what, $6.95 for seven seeds. So that's about a dollar a seed. So the reason I'm going to sow them in individual packs like this, instead of using something like this, is because they are such expensive seed, I want to make sure they have the best chance of success in terms of germinating. You're not going to likely get germination in all of the cells at the same time. Certain seeds will germinate more quickly than others. There may be a two, three, four day gap between when your first one germinates and when your last one germinates. 
These are going to be under the grow lights and under a humidity dome until they germinate. And what I don't want is to keep them there any longer than that, because then you're kind of inviting fungal issues and, you know, all kinds of problems. Now, if I did use one of these and let's say two germinated and two didn't, well, what I would usually do is take it out from underneath the humidity dome, put it just in a regular tray under the lights, but then I also risk the two that don't germinate drying out a lot more quickly. If I had two or three seeds sown in each cell, then it wouldn't be such a big deal because probably I would get, you know, at least some germination in all the cells within, you know, a day or so of each other, usually. But in this case, because I am doing only the one seed per cell, that may not be the case. Let's take a quick look to see what these seeds look like. And I think they're going to be basically the same as the other ones. They're pelleted seeds. Okay, so here are what the seeds look like. Oh, dear. I think I've lost one already. Oh, there it is. Got it. <laughs> so here we are. Exactly seven seeds. I'm going to put them in my little seed thing here. Now I'm going to just fill these guys up. Once again, I'm filling them almost to the top, but not quite. I made the tag for this one, and in this case, I did write the info on the back, 16 inches tall and 12 inches apart. And that's because I am going to be planting some of these in the ground. These are surface sown, so I am just going to put one seed in the middle. Okay, these two I am going to put back. Now, the one thing with pelleted seed is it does not last as long as regular seed that's not pelleted. So they often recommend that you use it up in the year that you purchase it, but I don't really need seven begonias and I have had relatively good luck with pelleted seed the year after I purchase it. So I don't think I've ever kept it longer than two years, but at least that gives me a couple more next year. At this point, I think I'm just going to use a single label for this. This is all one variety, so it's not like I have different varieties to keep track of. So I think we're going to be okay. I'm just going to make sure I keep the containers together when I put them under the lights. Next step is give the seeds a spritz. And now just cover it up with a little bit of vermiculite. Even though the seed is right in the middle. I'm putting that light layer of vermiculite on top because it also helps with keeping the soil moist. I'd want that for the entire top of the cell, not just around where the seed is. And lastly, a spray of water. And now I'm going to put these in a tray so that they can get bottom watered as well. The last one is this guy here. And this is fluffy feather top grass, and it's a penicetum. This was really the star of the show when I went to the trial gardens, and I knew I had to try it this year. It gets to be about 24 inches tall. It is early blooming, and it has a beautiful arching habit. So on the packet, this one says between 6 and 12 weeks before the last frost date. That is a huge range. Um, I am going nine weeks, which as it turns out is basically right in the middle of that. So we'll see how that works out. I have a feeling because the range is so big that this one really will probably be adjusted next year and I'll either have to sow a couple of weeks earlier or a couple of weeks later, but I guess we'll see. So for this one, I am going with one of these, which is kind of like a small six cell pack because these are going to be transplanted into larger containers in a few weeks. The seed packet does say that you should sow it in large plugs. So this is more or less a large plug size. So let's take a look at what this one looks like. These are not pelleted seeds from what I can see. They look like a pretty good size. Kind of interesting, half of them are white and half of them are brown. Not exactly sure what that means, but, or if it means anything at all. I'm gonna put these in here again so that 
they don't go all over the place. I think I am going to end up sewing the entire packet because it says that it contains 20 to 25 seeds. So even if I only put four seeds in each one, that would end up being about 24 seeds. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew this entire thing. Now, if this works out really well, next year I'll probably buy the next size up in terms of packet. But right now it's just an experiment to see how I do with these, so I didn't really want to invest any more than a single packet. First things first, let's fill this up with soil. Now, normally I think you would do four to six seeds per cell. And I'm going to start off with four seeds and then any that I have left over, I'll just add them to each of the individual cells. And because I don't know if there's really any difference, there probably isn't, but just in case between the plants that will be generated from the uh, white seeds versus the brown seeds, I'm kind of putting a mix of white and brown seeds in each cell, just in case. That way, if there is a difference, that will be kind of evenly distributed between the uh, different plants. I only had one seed extra after I did the four seeds per cell, so it worked out well. Now I am going to do the same as before. Spray the seeds down. So now I'm just going to top these off with a little bit of soil, one eighth of an inch, which isn't really that much. Because I am topping it off with soil, I don't need vermiculite on the top. I also am not gonna bother spraying it, but I am going to put it in my little container of water so that it soaks up the water from the bottom. The lobelia needs light to germinate and it is on a heat mat here that's set to 22 degrees and it kind of hovers between 22 and 23 and lobelia prefers temperatures from 22 to 26 degrees which is 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and it should take about 15 days to germinate and as soon as I start seeing some germination and depending on how tiny they are if they're still super tiny I'll leave them on here for a couple of days extra above and beyond when they germinate so it depends I guess but once they do germinate and you know they're a tiny bit bigger than a speck I will take them off of the heat mat no cover and they'll just go on the lights And here are the Rex begonias. The ideal temperature for germination on these is 24 degrees, which is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So I actually have them on a heat mat that's set a little bit higher than the other one. This one is set at 25 degrees, and usually it maintains a temperature between 24 and 25 degrees under here. They do need light to germinate, so they are under the lights and they should germinate in about 15 to 21 days and once again as soon as i see some germination i will take them out of the tray and put them just under the lights without a cover just at normal room temperature so here we have the fluffy penicetum now it doesn't say anywhere that this needs light to germinate it also doesn't say anywhere that it needs darkness to germinate so to make things easier for me I am putting it under the lights and we'll see how that goes. If I have to put them in a dark spot with a cover over them, then it's a little bit more finicky because I have to check on them once or twice a day just to make sure that nothing is germinating because then I have to immediately put them under the lights. So it's a lot easier just to put them under the lights from the start. This one actually prefers slightly lower temperatures, around 21 degrees or so. And so what I decided to do for this one is just put it directly under the lights with the cover on. And with that on, the ambient temperature and the soil temperature in here is about that 21 degree mark. These guys should only take three to six days to germinate. And then I am going to put them under my coolest um, area of the grow shelf as they prefer quite cool temperatures 
in the 15 to 18 degree range, which is 59 to 64. So my basement is at around 18 degrees and the ambient soil temperature will probably be within that range. So, you know, that should be okay. And now as a little extra bonus for you sticking it out and watching this entire video, let's just take a quick peek at the other things I have under the grow lights. It's not too much so far, but there's a couple of kind of exciting things. So first we have some eucalyptus that has come up. This is lemon bush. I only see one seedling so far on that one. And here I have silver drop eucalyptus. It's really hard to see. I don't know if you can make it out or not, but there is a seedling right over here and one right over there. So kind of hard to make out, but they are there. These are some impatience that I am growing for the first time this year. Well, technically for the second time, because many, many moons ago, I think 30 years ago, I sowed impatience and I think it worked out okay, but for some reason I didn't do it again. So I decided to give it another go and they're doing so well. I'm so excited. The variety here is Solarscape Pink Jewel, and these guys are All America Selection winners, and I'm just thrilled. I got basically 100% germination on those. And here are the peppers. I am growing six different varieties of peppers this year, but one of them is still undercover because there's no germination on it yet. It's very old seed, so I don't know whether I'll get anything, but that's okay. I'll have lots of extras. What I did here is I basically sowed a bunch of seeds in each pot and what I'll be doing is pricking those out and sowing them individually into their own pots once they get a little bit larger. And last but not least is this guy and this again is another new to me sowing. This is Dusty Miller and the variety is New Look and it's a broadleaf Dusty Miller. It has a large leaf instead of a lacy leaf and not bad. We're looking at about eight seedlings there right now. I think I sowed 10 seeds so I am quite happy with that. I am again keeping it under cover because they are still pretty tiny. So again Again, I'm thinking another day or two and I will take them off the heat mat and out of the covered area and they'll just go under the lights as is. And that's it. So all we have to do now is wait and cross our fingers that everything goes well. Um, I will make sure to keep you guys updated, I guess, on, you know, the successes, hopefully. There's more of those than failures. And uh, yeah, so we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.